Well, hello, it's uh, Guy Peplow here, and I'm talking today about David Michie, and particularly his, his early work. Uh, and this is obviously because our current exhibition is David Michie, The Early Years. Um, David was born in 1928 and died in 2015, and was a regular exhibitor with the Scottish Gallery throughout his, his professional life. He was born actually in France, in Saint Raphael, in, in, in the Côte d'Azur, um, into a very interesting family. His mother was, as most people know, was Anne Redpath, who was one of the leading lights of the Edinburgh School and recognised today as one of Scotland's greatest painters, certainly one of Scotland's greatest women artists. His father was called James Mickey, and he was an architect and not a bad painter either. Um, and he'd come to France, to, first to the north, to Picardy, with the War Graves Commission, and then worked in the south of, south of France for a, for a family on a number of building projects. So when David and his two older brothers uh, and family returned to Scotland to the borders, and was from, originally from Hoyt, I think they came initially to Gala Shields, they must have been rather exotic creatures, these three wee boys um, who'd only really known France up to that time. But I think David's... Um, warm personality, athletic ability, um, quickly made him lots of friends and he had a very successful time at, uh, at, at school in Hoyg. Eventually, not surprisingly, his older brother was an artist as well, Alistair, uh, David decided that um, he was going to be a painter. And looking back over his long life, uh, in the era he died, he, uh, he, he said touchingly that he couldn't imagine that he could have done anything else and that his looking at the world was really for his own amusement and if other people enjoyed what he did that was well and good which is a charming very typical self-effacing way to sum up uh, I think a, a long productive and wonderful life as an artist. Edinburgh College of Art uh, some uh, fellow students John Houston and Elizabeth Blackadder um, in particular and he had his travelling scholarship actually with John in, in Italy and you look at that early work uh, the work done in Italy and back in Scotland um, it's Typically Edinburgh School, quite tonally constructed, uh, lots of beautiful oil paint, um, but eked out of it, because these days paint was probably expensive and you weren't going to use huge impasto, would you? Um, you can certainly see the influence of his mother throughout his, his life as a painter, you can say that. But in those early pictures, um, perhaps more so, uh, you can see it the most in some of the painting trips he actually took with, uh, with, with Anne Redpath. I think they were together in Amsterdam, uh, they certainly went to Sky together, and to Fife. So some of those subjects in this ex represented in this exhibition have very direct links, because he was actually working alongside his mother. She died in 1965. Um, his career took, I suppose, a conventional turn. He had a, a time teaching up in Aberdeen, in Grace School of Art, and then came back uh, in the early 60s, in 1961, and uh, was a tutor at the College of Art in Edinburgh for a long time, over 30 years, uh, finishing up as, uh, as um, head of drawing and painting. And in the 90s, when I think he, he found his full form as a colourist, really, in the last 25 years of his life, um, he also travelled extensively with his family, his wife Eileen and two, two girls. They went to California, uh, North Africa, and many of these experiences were recorded in sketchbooks. He was a prolific draftsman and uh, always thinking, even in conversation, he was always thinking about painting and thinking about um, what, he, what he might paint. So he filled these sketchbooks with the natural world, with birds and bees and people. Uh, and I like to think of Mickey's comedy you men, because the human figure, quite often in rather hilarious circumstances, with bending over, doing a tango, um, standing in a pool, doing a, a, an exercise class with noodles. Um, all these things appealed to David. His, his sense of humour was there in much of his work. He loved gardens in Edinburgh, Marrakesh, different places. He was drawn again to the natural world, insects and flowers and, and beauty. So he's a very distinctive artist. Um, and, um, and I think in this show of, of the earlier work, you can see, um, see those distinctions growing him arriving at, uh, at his mature vision, um, indications of where he would go with colour in the last 25 years of his life, as I say. I would urge you to come and see the exhibition if you can, if you haven't already, because it's full of charm, 
We've also hung some Anne Redpath works so you can have a little bit of fun um, finding those particular connections, the way that she put detail in, the way David puts a little bit of detail to perhaps to enliven an otherwise relatively blank area of tone. This is something that they shared. Great fun to be recommended.